Old India was excavated. The earliest photos of India, between 1850 and 1865, reveal something surprising. Soil and vegetation, on top of large structures. Why had India been neglected for decades? Had there been a large flood event? This is Jagannath Sabha, Ellora, 1875. Durga Temple at Ahol, 1855. In later photos, we see buildings cleaned up and tidy. This is for example. What caused the state of disrepair? It's as if the people of the early 1800s didn't care about ancient monuments at all. Was it because the British East India Company was waging war against the Hindus? Or perhaps the cataclysmic events told of in Indian mythology? Were these events more recent than we are told? This is Stone Temple Car in the Vitala Temple, Vijayanagara, 1856. Notice the soil and grass atop the temple in the background. The top of the wagon has a different color than the bottom, a common sight, as we will see. It looks like part of it was buried, then dug out. This is Shangameshwara Temple, 1855. Puli, 1851. It only takes a few decades, maybe 20 years, for buildings to be overtaken by the elements. Notice the mud stains on the pillars. This thing was partially under mud, and is still partially buried in this picture. This is a mosque at Mutra, 1800s. Kalasa Temple, Ilara. Tour guides say, this is an example of building inside caves. But, it could just as well be an example of post-mud flood excavation. It looks like the entire structure was hewn out of one gigantic block. How? Archaeologists say, we did it with hammer and chisel. The word Alara is pronounced Alura, ancient German El Yura, El, meaning God, and Ur, means origins, or source. The Hindu story of who constructed the Alora buildings, differs wildly from what I'm told by Wikipedia. They label anything locals say about their history as mythology, and then impose the westernized enlightened version of what really happened. Mythology, or local recorded history, says that Alora was built by Alvala, with the modern spelling being Alvala. Alvala is a deity, which Hindu mythology says are celestial beings. Divas are higher level angels, Asuras are fallen angels, and Deityas are somewhere in between, some are good, some aren't. We're told the Deityas overran Earth, and needed to be hunted down and eradicated by the higher-ups, under the command of Vishnu. We find the same in other traditions. Islam, for example, says that the world pre-flood was overrun by tribes of jinn. The flood was meant to get rid of them. That neatly explains why it looks like geniuses built these things, and also why they don't exude that positive vibe we'd expect from celestial beings. They weren't divas, they were semi-fallen angels. I've visited India on two occasions, and got a sense of the ancient mega-sites being cursed. Finally, the mythology, explains why so much was and is buried. Mythology, matches observable reality. History summarized in one sentence. Beings from a higher realm, were destroyed by even higher beings. Maybe they weren't supposed to occupy Earth, or share advanced tech, but give humans the opportunity to develop on their own. The same story is told in every religion, another word to mask the factual stories told by our ancestors, and it's easy to see this is what happened in India and the rest of the world. These are the Ajanta Caves. They hide many more grand structures below Earth. To my eye, these buildings were treated with rock-melting weaponry. You know, the kind of rock-melting Brahmastra and Brahmasharastra weaponry Hindu mythology specifically talks about. Here's inside the caves of Ajanta. Old India was high-tech. For proper context, I recommend you check out my videos on ancient antennas and atmospheric energy before continuing the section. This is an 1870 photo of the sanctum and center of the Manakshi Sundarishvara temple in Madurai. The word Min denotes a celestial home of the gods in the Pleiades, Shi or Chi means ray, lighter energy, and Ak is the word for earth. Minakshi. 
But according to Wikipedia, Minakshi means fish-eyed. I once said that El and Min are found in every old culture. The mythology says the temple was built by the celestial being Minakshi, wife of Shiva. But modern academia says it was built by Pandian emperor, Sadaya Varman Kulasekar in the first. Some people say, well, why don't you think humans can build anything? Are we that dumb? Why does everything have to have been built by aliens? Well, I never said that. How should we know what is meant by celestial beings? They might be humans who live in another realm. They could also be fallen angels. They could be a lost tribe of humans. They could be supernatural. But aren't humans also supernatural? We have way too little knowledge to draw conclusions. So, let's wait and see what further research reveals before defining what is and isn't. Here's an aerial view of the Majorai complex. They built this stuff not just to look nice, but to serve a variety of purposes likely to do with harvesting, receiving and sending energy. There are more than 50,000 ancient temples and towers in India, all with very deliberate design. The particular style of temple you see on your screen is called Koyal, which means residence of God. Alternative spellings are Kaval, Koyal, Kaval, and Koyal, depending on language and accent. Kaval as residence of God makes sense from an ancient German perspective, the entrance towers are called Gopuram, other large towers Vimana. Gopuram is derived from the Tamil word for king, which is Ko, also a German word, king in modern German is Konig. Puram is said to mean town or city. Gopuram, king city. Kavel, residence of God. This is the Ranganathaswami temple in Sarangam, featuring the 192-foot-tall Raja Gopuram in the background. The tower in the front is called Tiruvami Coil. This is how it looked in the 1800s. Do you see what I see? The bottom has a different color than the upper part, as if it had been buried for a long time. It's common for old photos to show lamp-like devices atop temples in the mid-1800s, removed by the late 1800s. So what? It's to light up the tower at night, you say? Yes, of course it is. But with which technology? The electric lamps were invented in 1879 and came to public use years later. These photos predate the invention. Well of course these are oil lamps, you might say. But oil lamps leave dark stains on the objects they are placed on. Would they really risk staining their sacred structures? Notice again the change of coloration at the bottom 25% of the pillar. Old India was buried. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.